Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be reading about the octopus. Now, I knew a pretty good bit about octopuses, I thought, but I learned more when I was reading this book, so I hope you do too. And as always, I'm going to every now and then put my cursor down, so if you're lost, you can find where we are and catch right back up, but I do encourage you to read along, just like always. So we're going to delve right in today. It says, if I were to ask you to tell me a few facts about an octopus, I bet you could tell me that they're sea creatures with eight arms. And while this is true and interesting, there are a lot of other really neat facts about octopuses that may surprise you. For one, they're part of the mollusk family, which includes snails, clams, mussels, and oysters. Also, like jellyfish, they're invertebrates meaning they have no bones. This helps them squeeze into super tiny spaces. So this octopus is in a jar. It's squeezed into that little tiny jar. Now this is a cartoon drawing, but real octopus can squeeze into real jars too. So if you were with me in our jellyfish book, we talked about invertebrates for one, but we also talked about these bold print words like this. And whenever you see a bold print word, that means it's probably pretty meaningful to the book. It's probably pretty important. It's kind of like the pictures. They explain things. Whenever you see a, a bold print word, chances are it's going to be explained in that sentence or that caption or that picture or something. So over here, we have octo or octa, which means eight or having eight which makes sense because an octopus has eight arms. Also, an octagon, that's a shape, it has eight sides. And a stop sign is an octagon. See, they look exactly alike, their shape does, and that means that a stop sign has eight sides too. So down here, we have one of those bold print words that I was talking about. It's mollusk. And we read that an octopus is from the mollusk family. So this is a text feature that makes sense. They would have it in here. It's going to explain what a mollusk is. Give the definition. It's a kind of animal with a soft body. Yep, that's what an octopus has. Most, but not all, have a hard shell protecting the body. Well, an octopus doesn't have a hard shell, but it says most, it doesn't say all, have a hard shell. Over here we have clams, oysters, and snails that are all part of the mollusk family, and they do have hard shells. So we know that inside this hard shell right here is a soft, mushy clam, just like the oysters. The actual Oyster part is soft and mushy, and so is a snail. So they fit the definition perfectly, don't they? Coconut octopus. This is the one that surprised me, and I thought it was pretty interesting. A coconut octopus, while this octopus doesn't have a hard shell, it is known to carry around empty coconut shells to use as, mobile, as a mobile home and to protect it from predators. Mobile means it can be moved. So it acts as their mobile home and it protects it from predators. So maybe this octopus is getting under this coconut shell right here because it thinks that this diver is a predator. And we know it can squeeze under there because they could get into small spaces. Most octopuses live along the ocean's floor but there are a few species that live near the water's surface. Octopuses also prefer warm tropical waters over cold Arctic waters. I do too. How about you? You like the really cold water or do you prefer warm water? Though octopuses are considered mollusks, their diet or what they eat also consists of mollusks. Some of their prey, the things they eat, include sea slugs, snails, and mussels. They also eat small fish and crustaceans, such as crab and lobster, and 
there is the occasional meal of other smaller octopuses. Hmm. Up here in all of its eight arms, we see the things that it likes to eat. It probably eats more, but this is a few of them. We see fish and oysters, crab, clams, snails, lobster, other smaller octopuses, and this right here is a mussel. It's cooked, but I couldn't find a picture of one that wasn't cooked that I could use. Some predators, that's the animals that hunt and eat other animals, of octopuses are seals, sea otters, sharks, and large fish. So predators are the things that eat the octopus. That's when the octopus becomes the prey. These animals have their work cut out for them though, as octopuses have some pretty unique defense mechanisms. Do you know what a defense mechanism is? That's the way they protect themselves, the things they do in order to protect themselves. So we're gonna find out about three of those things right here. For one, they're able to shoot ink from their siphons, which can confuse their predators. So in this picture, it looks like it's shooting ink from its siphon. Later on in the book, I'm going to show you where the siphon is. But I can see where that would can confuse a predator. If you shoot a bunch of black ink out, the predator may not be able to even see the octopus anymore. It says they're also able to hide in really small spaces, so they can't be seen. Well, that makes sense because they're able to get into tiny jars. I bet they can hide into small in small spaces. This one is hiding under this rock and I bet it can get up under there even more. Lastly, octopuses are masters of disguise. They can camouflage themselves to look exactly like their surroundings. In other words, they can hide in plain sight. Can you see the octopus in this picture? Can you see the octopus in this picture? While I'm talking, I'll let you look for it. When I was looking for camouflaged octopuses, I found several pictures that I could have used for the book. But I couldn't see the octopus in the pictures because they blended in with the surroundings so well. They camouflaged themselves so well, I couldn't even see the octopus in order to put it in here to show you. I could kind of see this octopus. It's right here, and this right here is a little leg, arm, I guess. They're called arms. So you can barely see the octopus in this picture. It has blended in really well, hasn't it? I can see where that would definitely be a good defense mechanism. Not only do octopuses have unique defense mechanisms, but let's face it, they're quite unique physically, too. Did you know they have blue blood and a very large brain? Crazy, right? And let's not forget the obvious, their eight arms. Two of those arms act more like legs in that they help them walk along the ocean floor as well as help them push off when they're swimming. On the underside of their arms, octopuses have suckers that act like suction cups. These suckers help an octopus grasp items, pull apart their prey, and even open jars. So have you ever had anything with a suction cup on one side and attached it to a window or a mirror? It's hard sometimes to get that off, isn't it? Those suctions, suction cups can really grasp things tightly. So can you imagine having all of these little tiny suckers that act like suction cups attaching to you? It'd be tough to get away from that, wouldn't it? And all of those little tiny white things right here are suckers, which act like suction cups. And down here is a silly picture of a cartoon octopus grasping a book, a pencil, ruler, paintbrush, other things. And while we would never see a real octopus grasping that stuff, I bet they could. It says, did you know? The plural of octopus is octopuses or octopi. And remember, plural means more than one. If an octopus loses an arm, they can grow it back. This is called regeneration. Did you know that octopuses are great problem solvers, smart, 
and have a good memory. I bet that's because they have a big brain. Did you know octopuses have three hearts? This surprised me, because in the jellyfish book, we learned that jellyfish have no hearts and no brains. Some people have octopuses as pets, and this is a pet octopus in an aquarium. Would you like a pet octopus? I'm not so sure that I would. Maybe. I mean, I think it would be pretty, but I'm not sure how it would be in handling it. But before you run out and get a pet octopus, do your research. Some say they don't make the best of pets. That's what I was thinking. Being that they're so smart, they often get bored with their surroundings and their aquarium, which can either stress them out or create an escape artist out of them. If this doesn't deter you or put you off, you should at least go to a reputable pet store and find the best fit for you. You certainly wouldn't want to end up with a blue ringed octopus. They're highly venomous. Yikes. To stay on the safe side and learn all about them, just delve into a book or have a parent find you a video on YouTube. It's all right here at your fingertips. So yeah, what they're saying is don't go out on a fishing expedition with somebody, grab an octopus and bring it back and use it as a pet because you never can tell if you might be getting a very venomous octopus, one that has a lot of poison it can inject to you and to you. So this is a blue ring octopus and it's pretty but you don't want it because it can hurt you. It says, though this octopus is very small, it's highly venomous and produces a poison that can kill its prey. So, in minutes. So, it's pretty, but it's dangerous. Over here, we have parts of an octopus. So, the head is fairly obvious, isn't it? The eyes, that's another fairly obvious feature. The arms, there's eight of them. Remember? And on the bottom of those arms, or the underside, is where we'll see the suckers. That's these little round things, the things that act like suction cups. And the mouth. We didn't read about the mouth, but you can't see the mouth. But it's underneath the octopus right there where all of the eight arms meet underneath it. And here's that siphon that we read about the thing that can squirt ink, and they use it as a defense mechanism against their predators. So it's right here to the side of its head. I read that it's on the side of some octopus and at the front of other octopus. It may be both. It may be at the side front, but that's where the siphon is. So guys, I hope you learned a lot about octopuses today. I did when I was doing this book. It was pretty interesting. And until next time, I thank you for tuning in, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.